Hey there viewers, this week I decided to be super productive and thought I'd finally make my video demonstrating how to install and configure OpenVPN on the Raspberry Pi. For those who do not know what a VPN service is, I'll place a link to my previous video, which goes into that. Basically, a VPN will allow you to remotely access your network, and it will encrypt the packets that you send and receive. Also, for those who are interested in setting up a PPTP-based VPN server on your Raspberry Pi, I have another video linked which will go over that. PPTP VPN is a lot, and I do really mean lot, easier to set up and configure, but it isn't as secure as OpenVPN is. Because this is quite a lengthy tutorial, I'll dive right into it. First, I'm going to execute the sudo apt-get update command in order to update the packages in my Linux installation on my Raspberry Pi. Then I enter the sudo raspy config command and first thing I'll do is expand the file system. By expanding the file system, my Raspberry Pi can utilize all the 4 gigabytes of space that I have on my SD card. Next, I'll overclock my Raspberry Pi, which will give us a little bit of performance increase. So I'm going to overclock its CPU from 700 megahertz to 900 megahertz, which is a medium overclock. Okay, so now that that's done, the next thing that I want to do is change the memory split. Right now, the Raspberry Pi is allocating some of its memory towards the GPU. However, we're accessing the unit through SSH, so it doesn't utilize the GPU at all. And therefore, really, no memory needs to be allocated towards the GPU. So, currently 64 megabytes of memory is allocated towards the GPU. I'm going to change that to 16, which is the lowest that we can have and press OK. So now I'm going to commit all the changes by clicking or selecting the finish button. And I'll do that and I'll reboot my Raspberry Pi in order to commit the changes. So the first thing that we want to do once our Raspberry Pi has rebooted is install OpenVPN as well as OpenSSL. To do this, enter the following command sudo apt get install openvpn space openssl. This will install the respective packages for openvpn and openssl. The next thing that we need to do is enter the openvpn directory. This can be done by the cd command, which means change directory. So enter cd slash etc slash openvpn. And then when you press enter, we'll be in the OpenVPN directory. Next, we want to use the cp command, which stands for copy, to copy the example ezrsa file into the ezrsa folder. This can be done by entering the following command. So I'm copying the example file for ezrsa from the examples directory, and I'm going to copy it to the ezrsa folder. So the dot slash ezrsa that I'm entering right now defines where the copied file will be placed. Next, we're going to modify the vars file contained within the ezrsa folder. To do so, enter the following command. We are going to modify the line that says export ezrsa and then in quotations has the letters pwd. Replace the pwd and the quotations with the following. Make sure it looks exactly the same. Once you're done, save the file by hitting the Control x command. Enter the following command in the main terminal window. Dot space dot slash easy dash rsa slash vars. Now we're going to run the clean all script by entering dot slash ezrsa slash clean all. Once that's done, we're going to change directory to the ezrsa directory. Next, we're going to use the ln command to link the two open SSL files together. I've already created a symbolic link before, so when I try to create it once again, it's probably going to give me an error. Now comes the fun part. We're going to create the client and the server files. 
Basically, we're generating the keys, certificates, and other files needed for the client in order to connect to the server. First, we need to get out of the easy RSA directory and into the open VPN directory. So now we're going to build the keys, RSA files, and the configuration files to make OpenVPN work. So the first command that we need to enter is easyrsa build-ca openvpn. When you press enter, it'll build the configuration file, as you can see on the screen. Now it'll ask you a bunch of questions like country name, province name, and etc. Just press enter on all of them. You really don't need to enter anything. Next, type in the following command and press enter. It'll ask you probably once again to enter your country name and province name, etc. You really don't need to enter anything. Even the challenge pa password, just leave it empty and press enter. And I do want to generate the certificate and sign it. So I'll press Y and enter, Y and enter again. And there we go. We're done that part. To build the client key, enter the following command. And it'll ask you country name, province name, and all the information once again. Do the same thing you did last time and just leave everything empty and just press enter. The next command, which is easyrsa slash build dh, will take a few minutes, so just be patient. At this point in time, we want to modify the OpenVPN configuration file. This can be done by entering the command nano space openvpn.conf. At first, there'll be nothing contained within this file, so don't be surprised if you receive just a black screen. We need to manually enter information into the configuration file for OpenVPN. Type in the following information. For your convenience, I've also added the text in this configuration file into the description of this video. However, if you copy and paste the text into your configuration file, make sure that the quotations are actually quotations. Sometimes, when pasting it in, it changes the quotations into these characters that although resemble quotations, they actually aren't, and it'll mess up your configuration file, and the VPN service won't function. When you're done entering items into the configuration file, commit the changes. Enter the following command. The long and seemingly confusing command that I'm typing in at the moment basically enables IP forwarding. So the next command that we're going to enter is ifconfig, which will basically list all our network adapters on our device. For the Raspberry Pi, if you're connecting by Ethernet, your default network adapter should be ETH0. The INET address is your Raspberry Pi's internal address. For me, that is 192.168.1.10. Keep note of this as you'll need it in the future. At this point in time, we're going to enter another seemingly complex and confusing command. Basically, it deals with IP tables and routing information. At the end, where I enter the 192.168.1.10, you may need to change that to your Raspberry Pi's internal IP address. One additional thing that you should recognize is that in the command, I've specified that Ethernet 0 is my network adapter. Next, enter the cd.dot command to get out of the OpenVPN directory and into the etc directory. This command is followed by nano space sysctl.conf. In the sysctl configuration file, you need to uncomment the line related to packet forwarding for IPv4 connections. Commit your changes after making this modification. Change directory once again so that you enter the home directory for your Raspberry Pi. The command that we're entering at the moment will actually start the OpenVPN service on a Raspberry Pi.
In the root directory in Raspberry Pi, we need to create a new file named newvpn.openvpn. This file will once again be completely empty, so we're going to have to enter the information in ourselves. I've also included the information once again in the description of this video. Change your Raspberry Pi's IP address to your internal IP address of your Raspberry Pi. In my case, that is 192.168.1.10. The 1194 after a Raspberry Pi's IP address specifies a port that we're going to use for the VPN service. When you're done, commit the changes. Next, enter the following command. In the rc.local file, we need to enter some information. I've included the information in the description of the video. Where it says Raspberry Pi IP address, once again replace it with your local network IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Once again, commit the changes and get out of the rc.local file. At this point in time, we need to copy the keys for our OpenVPN service into a more reasonable folder that we can access easily through FTP. I am using the cp command, which is a copy command to copy the client authentication files from the etc slash openvpn slash easyrsa slash keys folder to a more reasonable folder that I can access over FTP such as home dash pi. So if I don't get any errors, that means all the client authentication files in the keys folder are now copied over to home slash pi. Now, although the files from the keys folder are copied to home slash pi, we have a problem. When we FTP into our Raspberry Pi to obtain these files, we'll realize that we don't have permission to actually copy them over to our computer. We need to give the Raspberry Pi user access to the keys folder, which can be found within the home slash pi's folder. This can be done using the command chown pi double dot pi and then the path to the keys folder. So now as you can see I can access the files within the keys folder when I'm logged in via FTP using the pi user. So I'm just going to drag out the ca.crt file, the client1.crt file, and the client1.key file. And I still do not have permission for some reason to access the client1.key file. So I'll need to use the chown command once again in order to grant the pi user access to this file. In the video, I'm changing my current directory to the keys directory. Uh, you don't need to do this step, it's completely unnecessary. However, what you do need to do is to use the chmod command in order to change the permissions on the client key file. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. So I'm changing the permissions to 777, which means that I have complete access to the client1.key file. I can do whatever I want to it. I can delete it, move it, rename it, whatever I want to it. And as you saw, I've successfully transferred it over to my desktop. And these are all the files we need in order to set up an OpenVPN connection from our Macintosh computer. I'm using an OpenVPN client named Viscosity. So I'm going to set up a new connection. For the testing purposes, I'm just going to enter the internal IP address of my Raspberry Pi on my network. This is just for testing. If I want to access from outside, I'm going to have to enter our external IP address in order to connect to the Raspberry Pi. Next, I'm going to put the ca.crt file into the ca column. In the certificate column, I'm going to put the client1.certificate. And in the key column, I'm going to put client1.key. Save this. And let's see if I can actually connect to the server. And there you go, it connected without any hiccups. Now, what if I wasn't at home and I wanted to connect to the Raspberry Pi's VPN service, since this is most of the times when you'll be using a VPN service anyways. In order to do this, we can't use the Raspberry Pi's internal IP address. Instead, we have to use our external IP address this is the IP address that's visible to the rest of the internet. 
It is important to make sure at this point in time that the router's firewall isn't blocking all connections coming into the Raspberry Pi. To do this, make sure that the Raspberry Pi is set on a demilitarized zone, or a DMZ. By putting your Raspberry Pi in the DMZ, it tells the router to allow all external traffic to access it. Secondly, you might want to make sure that port forwarding is enabled on your router so that the port 1194 allows traffic to be passed onto the Raspberry Pi, since the port 1194 is what the VPN service relies on. Right now I'm connected to my mobile device using tethering, and as you can see the IP address starts with a 24. Now I'm going to connect to the VPN service. It takes a little bit of time connecting from my mobile device since the internet isn't all that particularly fast. And there we go, we connected successfully. Now when I refresh the page, my IP address changes. This indicates that the VPN service is working as it should. And that's all there really is to setting up OpenVPN. And as you can see, while I'm connected to the VPN service, I can access resources from my internal network. Thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial. If you enjoyed the content, please feel free to like the video and leave some feedback. I'd love to hear back from my audience. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel if you like the other content that we have.